Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The South African construction industry and government have reached agreement on an accelerated transformation program which could fundamentally change the face of the sector. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about the deal. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this deal? It really goes back to you know, this very high profile collusion case where um, the construction companies in South Africa were found to be colluding on a range of mega projects. Mostly the high profile ones were related to the FIFA World Cup in 2010. And in the run up to that, there were a number of projects that related to roads that Sanral was building, that related to stadiums. But there were other projects where uh, these cases of collusion came to light. Um, and we know that uh, in 2013, they were fined 1.46 billion, 1.5 billion, around that level, 1.46 billion. Um, because of that, uh, so those were penalties that arose. And the reputational damage done to the industry was significant. Uh, there was this view in society that construction companies are no nothing more than criminals. Um, there was a, a view that there was an untransformed industry that hadn't done much to encourage black economic empowerment. So a process of engagement uh, went, was behind the scenes really, took place between government and between the industry over the last three and a half years to try and mend fences, look at how the industry could r repair its image in society. And that uh, during that process, you know, I think a lot of things were raised where government was saying, you know, the fines weren't really stiff enough. They felt the penalty should have been much higher. That uh, this, this sort of slow pace of transformation, even though there is an industry sector charter, was unacceptable to it because these, many of these companies live off government work and there was a feeling that, you know, that there wasn't a responsiveness necessary from the industry to the fact that um, they should use that leverage as government, what government would like to use that leverage of procurement to facilitate transformation. And obviously in a more contemporary uh, theme of uh, radical e socio-economic transformation, which is the current theme of the, of the president following the state of the nation, has also sort of, uh, it's culminated uh, these two processes have sort of mated and uh, we see that now uh, there has been a meeting of minds and some sort of resolution. You must understand there's also, there was also the threat of further legal action. So we know that Sanral uh, was taking civil action against these construction companies and so was the city of Cape Town. Now, as I understand it, um, and th it may change, is that the legal action from Sanral uh, will probably stop as a result of this settlement. And uh, the city of Cape Town, however, their legal processes were far more advanced, apparently, and those might go ahead. So the background is really one of an untransformed industry, one where the reputation was very tarnished, and one where there was a reaching out from those executives to government and vice versa to try and repair and not you know, lose what is a really important national asset. We've got a good construction industry that develops good product, good services, but they did also make serious mistakes uh, in the recent past and the way they were colluding and the way that their, their business practices um, that uh, they had to try and remedy. What commitments have been made by the industry? Now the, the, this, they're quite interesting financially. There's a commitment of 1.5 billion rand to developmental type projects and these, this money will be paid by seven companies that have signed up to this agreement uh, over the next few years. And those, So there'll be a, f a trust that's set up and uh, money will flow into that trust from these construction companies and they'll go into developmental programs, whether those are school infrastructure or bursaries uh, or artisan development programs. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. But already, I think the money has already been paid in the first tranche and the second tranche is later this year. So that fund is being uh, capitalized. But that's not really the main thrust. The main thrust is about a, an accelerated transformation of this industry in terms of its racial di di dimensions. And really what this agreement says, these seven companies will either sell 40% of their businesses to black, uh, black owned businesses. So they'll be majority, well not necessarily majority, but they'll have a big portion of black uh, ownership in, uh, in the company. Or they'll uh, have a, a series of partnerships over the next seven years where they'll build up to the equivalent of 25% of their annual revenue. So some companies are opting to sell equity, others are, are, are looking to uh, partner and mentor and uh, help emerging contractors 
become larger uh, uh, standalone businesses. Now we've already seen that Murray and Roberts and Avenge, the two largest, have decided to, to go the equ equity route. So Murray and Roberts is selling 100% of its South African or Southern African focused infrastructure, civil engineering, construction uh, businesses. And um, so Murray and Robert will still exist, but it won't be focused on the things that we used to see them doing, such as the car trains and the big power station projects. There'll be an, that's going to be owned by um, or led by a consortium uh, led by Southern Palace, which is a black empowerment holding company, which is converting into an operational company. And then Avenge is, is selling 51% of Avenge Gunica LTA to a, a woman-led consortium, Kutana uh, Construction, and that, that I think we'll get details quite soon as to how that's progressing. So two have decided the equity route. Some others have decided, like Wilson Bailey Homes, and, uh, uh, is going to go the route of uh, this partnership model, 25% of their revenue being directed towards emerging contractors um, over the next seven years. And then there's a couple that are still making a decision as to which route they're going to go. So I think during this reporting period, which has started now, we'll probably get more clarity from these seven companies as to the sort of the nature of uh, what they're looking at. It's, it's companies like um, Group 5, Stefanuti Stocks, Basil Reed, um, uh, you know, that will need to make decisions around their, their preferred model. Or some have already, like Wilson Buddy Homes, have already made those decisions. And Stefanuti Stocks, I think, is erring on the side of the the sort of mentorship, partnership arrangement. So the ultimate goal is that, by, well not the ultimate, but the goal over the seven year period is one is having this fund um, to support good causes and uh, especially maybe helping to train uh, young engineers, quantity surveyors, uh, get bursaries for them. And then more fundamentally is to either build uh, or to have these tier one large construction companies that are black owned and black controlled like the Marion Roberts and the Avenge Greenica LTA, or this pipeline of emerging contractors that they're wanting to see at the end of this process, several of these being with market capitalizations in excess of three billion rand. So, so it's fairly sizable businesses that will come through from this process. So, you know, it has been fobbed off, I think, in society that's quite jaded about empowerment transactions and uh, also about the construction industry. Um, uh, as, as not so meaningful, but I think, you know, when we look back, if this is implemented as planned, it's going to be quite a significant change to the construction industry, as you said in your intro, a, a changed face of the South African construction industry. Are we likely to see similar deals in other sectors of the economy? Well, I think that's going to be interesting now, um, because we know that government's not, not happy with the pace of uh, uh, transformation across a li large range of sectors. And uh, the leverage that they've obtained from this competition uh, uh, sort of settlement, this dispute, has been was interesting. So uh, the reputational damage was obviously there, but then that uh, to sort of heal that, the healing process was to use that uh, to to the advantage of pushing for greater transformation. Now it comes in a week where we see that I think several banks are going to go through a very serious uh, tumultuous period with the decision by the Competition Commission to refer uh, to the tribunal a case of manipulation of the RAND and collusion. And uh, well, it'll be interesting to see whether government will try to seek a similar healing process and push the transformation agenda through that. That would be much bigger I mean, versus the construction industry. The banks are a much larger sector. We see that um, this issue around once empowered, always empowered is not popular at all within the mining sector from the government side and uh, it, it might be used as well as to be pointed to the construction sector might be pointed to as, as, a, as a signpost of what uh, government would like to see as a more sort of accelerated process a more permanent process of ownership and co control At this stage is too early it's premature to say whether we can see this model replicated every sector is very different and has its peculiar peculiarities and therefore it's not going to be a, a cut and paste job. But what it does create is a template uh, for government to, to, to point to and say, look, wha you know, the construction sector has, you know, given, even though it was a tardy in its, uh, in its um, efforts to transform, has really, you know, seems to be going ahead of uh, some other sectors 
and maybe uh, others should follow suit. But as I say, it's going to be something of a, that we're going to have to wait and see. Thank you. That's the second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.